July 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 26 through 28 of the Old Testament. All the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in his father Amaziah's place. Uzziah built up Elat and restored it to Judah after King Amaziah had passed away. Uzziah was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah, who was from Jerusalem. He did what the Lord approved, just as his father Amaziah had done. He followed God during the lifetime of Zechariah, who taught him how to honor God. As long as he followed the Lord, God caused him to succeed. Uzziah attacked the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jabne and Ashdod. He built cities in the region of Ashdod and throughout Philistine territory. God helped him in his campaigns against the Philistines, the Arabs living in Gerbal, and the Meunites. The Ammonites paid tribute to Uzziah, and his fame reached the border of Egypt, for he grew in power. Uzziah built and fortified towers in Jerusalem at the Corner Gate, Valley Gate, and at the Angle. He built towers in the desert and dug many cisterns, for he owned many herds in the lowlands and on the plain. He had workers in the fields and vineyards in the hills and in Carmel, for he loved agriculture. Uzziah had an army of skilled warriors trained for battle. They were organized by divisions according to the muster rolls made by Jael, the scribe, and Maaseah, the officer under the authority of Hananiah, a royal official. The total number of family leaders who led warriors was 2,600. They commanded an army of 307,500 skilled and able warriors who were ready to defend the king against his enemies. Uzziah supplies shields, spears, helmets, breastplates, bows, and slingshots for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made war machines carefully designed to shoot arrows and large stones from the towers and corners of the walls. He became very famous, for he received tremendous support and became powerful. But once he became powerful, his pride destroyed him. He disobeyed the Lord his God. He entered the Lord's temple to offer incense on the incense altar. Azariah the priest and eighty other brave priests of the Lord followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and said to him, It is not proper for you, Uzziah, to offer incense to the Lord. That is the responsibility of the priest, the descendants of Aaron, who are consecrated to offer incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have disobeyed, and the Lord God will not honor you. Uzziah, who had an incense censer in his hand, became angry. While he was ranting and raving at the priest, a skin disease appeared on his forehead right there in front of the priest in the Lord's temple near the incense altar. When Azariah the high priest and the other priests looked at him, there was a skin disease on his forehead. They hurried him out of there. Even the king himself wanted to leave quickly because the Lord had afflicted him. King Uzziah suffered from a skin disease until the day he died. He lived in separate quarters afflicted by a skin disease, and banned from the Lord's temple. His son Jotham was in charge of the palace and ruled over the people of the land. The rest of the events of Uzziah's reign from start to finish were recorded by the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. Uzziah passed away and was buried near his ancestors in a cemetery belonging to the kings. This was because he had a skin disease. His son Jotham replaced him as king. Jotham was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did what the Lord approved, just as his father Uzziah had done. He did not, however, have the audacity to enter the temple, yet the people were still sinning. He built the upper gate to the Lord's temple and did a lot of work on the wall in the area known as Ophel. He built cities in the hill country of Judah and fortresses and towers in the forest. He launched a military campaign against the king of the Ammonites and defeated them. That year, the Ammonites paid him 100 talents of silver, 
10,000 cores of wheat, and 10,000 cores of barley. The Ammonites also paid the same amount of annual tribute the next two years. Jotham grew powerful because he was determined to please the Lord his God. The rest of the events of Jotham's reign, including all his military campaigns and his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. Jotham passed away and was buried in the city of David. His son Ahaz replaced him as king. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. He did not do what pleased the Lord in contrast to his ancestor David. He followed in the footsteps of the kings of Israel. He also made images of the balls. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and passed his sons through the fire, a horrible sin practiced by the nations whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places, on the hills and under every green tree. The Lord his God handed him over to the king of Syria. The Syrians defeated him and deported many captives to Damascus. He was also handed over to the king of Israel, who thoroughly defeated him. In one day, King Pekah, son of Remaliah of Israel, killed 120,000 warriors in Judah because they had abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors. Zikri, an Ephraimite warrior, killed the king's son, Maaseah, Azricam, the supervisor of the palace, and Elkanah, the king's second in command. The Israelites seized from their brothers 200,000 wives, sons, and daughters. They also carried off a huge amount of plunder and took it back to Samaria. Obed, a prophet of the Lord, was there. He went to meet the army as they arrived in Samaria and said to them, Look, because the Lord God of your ancestors was angry with Judah, he handed them over to you. You have killed them so mercilessly that God has taken notice. And now you are planning to enslave the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Yet are you not also guilty before the Lord your God? Now listen to me. Send back those you have seized from your brothers, for the Lord is very angry at you. So some of the Ephraimite family leaders, Azariah, son of Jehokanan, Barakiah, son of Meshillamoth, Jechizkiah, son of Shalom, and Amasa, son of Hadlai, confronted those returning from the battle. They said to them, Don't bring those captives here. Are you planning on making us even more sinful and guilty before the Lord? Our guilt is already great, and the Lord is very angry at Israel. So the soldiers released the captives and the plunder before the officials and the entire assembly. Men were assigned to take the prisoners and find clothes among the plunder for those who were naked. So they clothed them, supplied them with sandals, gave them food and drink, and provided them with oil to rub on their skin. They put the ones who couldn't walk on donkeys. They brought them back to their brothers at Jericho, the city of the date palm trees, and then returned to Samaria. At that time, King Ahaz asked the king of Assyria for help. The Edomites had again invaded and defeated Judah and carried off captives. The Philistines had raided the cities of Judah in the lowlands in the Negev. They captured and settled in Beth Shemesh, Ajalon, Gedaroth, Soko and its surrounding villages, Timnah and its surrounding villages, and Gimzo and its surrounding villages. The Lord humiliated Judah because of King Ahaz of Israel. For he encouraged Judah to sin and was very unfaithful to the Lord. King tiglath pileser of Assyria came, but he gave them more trouble than support. Ahaz gathered riches from the Lord's temple, the royal palace, and the officials and gave them to the king of Assyria, but that did not help. During his time of trouble, King Ahaz was even more unfaithful to the Lord he offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus, whom he thought had defeated him. He reasoned, since the gods of the kings of Damascus help them, I will sacrifice to them so they will help me. But they caused him and all Israel to stumble.
Ahaz gathered the items in God's temple and removed them. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple and erected altars on every street corner in Jerusalem. In every city throughout Judah, he set up high places to offer sacrifices to other gods. He angered the Lord God of his ancestors. The rest of the events of Ahaz's reign, including his accomplishments from start to finish, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Judah and Israel. Ahaz passed away and was buried in the city of David. They did not bring him to the tombs of the kings of Israel. His son Hezekiah replaced him as king. God, you can fill Ahaz's whirlwind that is happening. Um, when he goes to the king of Assyria for help, the Edomites have invaded, the Philistines have raided, <laughs> all this stuff is happening. And King uh, Tiglath Pileser of Assyria comes, but it says he gave him more trouble than support. And then Ahaz is all flustered and he goes into your temple and gathers up all the stuff from there and gives it to the king of Assyria. But that didn't even help. <laughs> he offered sacrifices to the God of Damascus and that didn't help. Um, and I'm kind of laughing because if you read it that way, you can completely feel Ahaz's frustration and his turmoil. And he just does more and more going completely against everything you want him to do. And he just gets himself more and more in trouble. Uh, and it definitely does remind me of like a whirlwind or a tornado that he's he's swirling around causing all these problems for himself and, and I kind of laugh about it but I think about our lives God and we do the exact same thing to you granted we might not be at war with with countries uh, we're possibly at war with other people or our husbands or wives or our kids or people at work or even ourselves God help us to recognize when we're doing what Ahaz is doing not just the sinning part, but that starting to swirl part, that tornadoing whirlwind part where we are going to try this and then we try this and then we try this and we try this and, and we just get ourselves all worked up and going around in circles and nothing seems to work. When all you do is ask us to just be quiet, <laughs> just be still, come before you, lay everything down at your feet and just be quiet and that you will then take over you will take care of what is happening you will provide the answer we are simply commanded to pray we're commanded to pray for what it is that we want as long as it's within your will and you have promised to give us those things within your will God, if we have lives that seem out of control, that are whirlwinding around and tornadoing around and drama and agitation, the very first thing we need to do is just simply be on our knees before you, God, and being quiet. In this very loud world we live in, very busy world, a lot of things going on, a lot of um, points of contact coming into our lives. I don't know if we know how to be quiet. I don't know if we know how to just be at peace. Yet I very much know that since you came into my life, there's this amazing peace inside of me that if things start swirling around in my life from outside people and outside situations, I can just tap into that peace and I am calm in the middle of all the storms going around me. And that calmness, that peace comes from you, God. A peace that passes all understanding. I don't understand where the peace comes from or how it ended up inside me, except I know it's all about you. And I know without you, that peace wouldn't be there. God, allow us to shut out the rest of the world, all the noise and confusion and drama, and just focus completely on you. You are the only thing that matters glorification of you in your son's name I pray amen